Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this evening's Urban Planning Committee meeting for the 28th of September 2016. In recognising the cultural diversity of our great city, I pay my respects to the local Indigenous people of Moreland by acknowledging that we meet on the traditional lands of the Wandry people. I offer my respects to the Wandry elders past and present and to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Members of the gallery, please note this Urban Planning Committee meeting is being recorded and web streamed live to Council's website. The recording will be available as video on demand and attendees are advised they may be recorded during this meeting. Uh, we'll turn to councillors and officers in attendance this evening. Councillors in attendance this evening are Councillor Megan Hopper, Councillor John Kavanagh, Good evening. Uh, myself, Councillor Helen Davidson, Councillor Lambros Tapanos, mm -hmm. Councillor Lenka Thompson. And officers in attendance this evening tonight are Group Manager of City Development, Philip Priest, Planning Coordinator, Darren Camilleri, Planning Coordinator Mark Hughes, Planning Coordinator Robert Shafford, Governance <coughs> Officer Saskia Hunter, Planning uh, Principal Urban Planner Kate McLaren, and Urban Planner Kimberly Martin. And do we have any apologies for this evening? No, none to declare. And do we have, oh, can I have a motion? Oh, no motion for that. Can I um, move to the adoption of the minutes for the meeting held on the 24th of yeah. August 2016? Happy to move that. Madam moved Chair. by Councillor Kavanagh, seconded by Councillor Hopper. And I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? I declare that carried. And are there any declarations of interest or conflicts of interest to declare? No, none for this evening. Okay. So I'll just give a brief introduction about how this evening's meeting will run. Um, the relevant planner will introduce the report and the officer's recommendations. I'll then give the objectors an opportunity to move to the lectern in front of us to make their submission. After this time, the applicant will be given an opportunity to speak. If you are making a submission this evening, please state your name and your address for the record. You are requested to present your viewpoints clearly and concisely on why you support or oppose the planning application. Please don't repeat what other speakers have previously said and keep your points focused on relevant issues and points not previously raised. If you are opposed to the planning application, please inform the committee why you are opposed and suggest an alternative approach which would satisfy your concerns. Please use this opportunity to focus on concerns rather than matters of detail in the officer's report. And there is a strict time limit of three minutes for each speaker, but as chairperson, I reserve the right to increase or decrease that time available. So we'll now move on to the presentation of reports this evening. And the first one on the agenda is uh, 122 Middle Street in Hadfield, Planning Permit Application, MPS 2015-599. And I'll now turn to the Planning Officer to give an introduction. Thank you, councillors and members of the gallery. Uh, so the application, the first item that we're presenting this evening is 122 Middle Street in Hadfield. This application is for the construction of seven dwellings comprising six triple storey dwellings and one double storey dwelling. The aerial image on the screen shows the location of the subject site and the immediate surrounds. The subject site is located on the northern side of Middle Street and forms part of the West Street Neighbourhood Activity Centre. The site is located within a residential growth zone and is affected by the special building overlay development contribution plan overlay and parking overlay. At present, the subject site is currently developed with a single storey weatherboard dwelling. The ground floor level of the development proposes one single vehicle crossover and associated access way, seven single vehicle garages, studies for dwelling one and six, and a bedroom for dwelling seven. The first floor level comprises open plan living, balconies and second bedroom for dwelling seven. Moving to the second floor, two bedrooms are proposed for dwellings one through six. The north and south elevations, thank you. The north and south elevations detail the proposal as viewed from Middle Street and the rear of the property. The side elevations, shown as east and west, show the proposal as viewed from the neighbouring dwellings. During the application process, 19 objections were received. 
The location of these objectives is shown on the screen. The key issues raised in the objections are on-site parking provision, traffic impacts, the scale of the development, impact on solar panels and amenity impacts. A consultation meeting was arranged and held on the 14th of July 2016. This meeting was attended by four objector parties, two council planning officers, the permit applicant, owner and councillor Oscar Yildiz. Following the consultation meeting, the plans were formally amended by the applicant. This amendment was not advertised as the changes resulted in a smaller first floor form by increasing the side, side setback from the west boundary to the balconies and the provision of a two metre high acoustic fence as requested by the adjoining property owner. A hard copy of these plans were circulated to all objector parties along with the formal invitation to tonight's urban planning committee meeting. The report is recommending the issue of a notice of decision to grant a planning permit subject to conditions contained on pages four to eight of the recommendation. The key condition to note is condition 1A, which seeks a deletion of the term acoustic to this east boundary fence. In this case, due to the fencing requirements of Melbourne water, it is not possible, um, and the special building overlay, it is not possible to possible to provide an acoustic fence. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a member of the gallery who wishes to speak first in relation to this application? Yes. Yes, please come forward. <coughs> My name's uh, James Matthews and I live next door to the this proposal, 124 Middle Street, Hadfield. I'm totally, I totally oppose the uh, this proposal. The number of units proposed, seven, is far too many for this size block. The height, three storeys, too high causing absolute no sunshine over our block, which will kill off lawns and gardens. We currently have two storey units behind and beside, already beside our block. The units proposed have six balconies located on the second storey level with three <coughs> With uh, three months on three mounts on this on the fence side. Sorry, the size of these balconies being 8.6 square metres, which is very large. These balconies will create a health and safety hazard, causing by cooking, smoking, and passive smoke being sucked into my home through our evaporative air conditioning system, which is located directly opposite these balconies. That's the first three units. The noise generated from the balconies and units all the way down the block from resident living will make our conditions terrible. Privacy, we will have none. These units will create a huge extra strain on current infrastructure, reparking and traffic problems. The proposal front view does not look and fit into the current Middle Street Hatfield building skyline. The size of the units being so small and the number seven off will create ghettos. Please remember, Hatfield is not an inner suburb with many high rise units and all their problems. Comments. Balcony should be built inside the main building envelope, in this case facing north and south. This keeps all problems within the proposed development and of course less units. The wife and I have lived here for 53 years, raised three children, and above all, enjoyed the Australian way of life with normal backyard space and privacy. Do not let money-hungry developers destroy our culture and living standards. This development will have far too many negative impacts on our area. Council is currently achieving its objective in this high density area with two storey, four townhouses on the blocks of 50, 150 in Hadfield. Keep the three and four storey units above shops in West Street, as in opposite the school, about three or 400 yards in West Breen. And that's where they should be located and that's what the state government requests. 
not starting from the tail end of this, this high density area. I am not against changes for the better. The current applicant has a proposal, had a proposal before this one for two storey four townhouses, which I didn't object, neither did the other neighbour on the other side. Common sense must prevail. Let's move in the right direction by setting standards that protect all property owners and still allows development. I ask the question, would you like to live next to this proposed development? And think about that, because that's what we are confronted with. Thank you. Thank you. Is there another member of the gallery who wishes to speak in relation to this application? Another objector? Yes. Yes, please come forward. <coughs> Councillors, my name is Mark and I'm speaking on behalf of my father, Vincent Emelin, off 120 Middle Street, located on the east side of this proposal. We strongly object to this proposed, proposed monstrosity which is being planned for development next door to our family home. This seven unit, three storey tall, basically from the plans that look like boxes, are going to cover the entire block and I really believe it shouldn't be built in this area. The proposed construction is total out of character for this neighbourhood and will take away from the current style that exists today and that none of this type or style of building is in this area too. I will now outline the implications of this proposal to our family home. One, massive height and full length of these units will cast a large shadow across the length of our property by mid-afternoon, resulting in loss in sunshine to our gardens and natural light which entering into the home will also be affected. And we believe there are just too many units for this size of the house block. We feel that these units were too close to our property boundary. The large number of units proposed will cause overcrowding. Basically, you're going from one family to seven in the same area. Oh, I just don't understand it. This is a quiet area, which now will become far more noisier. There's also the loss of privacy by persons having access along our current boundary fence, looking over, looking over straight into our home and backyard. They can par walk down as proposed on the east side all the way down to the garage and there's no one stopping anyone from jumping up and seeing what's in the backyard and prying up, well, on my parents and seeing what, what they're up to. And who's stopping anyone from walking along the street, walking up and jumping the fence and checking out what's in the backyard there, which apparently they can't do. There's also the loss of, feel, of, feel, the loss of feeling safe in one's home. Like I said before, prying eyes, windows, looking over the units. This will always create a feeling of not being safe in one's home. This will cause, and also this type of thing will cause more traffic in our quiet area and this will most definitely devalue property values too. I suggest reducing the number of units to about three off, being two storeys tall, to a similar construction that's already built in the street. Keep it uniform throughout. Don't have all these different styles going everywhere because it just, it already has an existing style running through. Just keep the same thing flowing through. I, I just believe it would be nicer. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Is there another objector who wishes to speak? Yes. <coughs> Hi, uh, my name is uh, Frank Scarpino. I live at 125 Middle Street, Hatfield. Uh, I built a brand new single story house about three years ago. Um, lovely area, uh, coming from Strathbourne, finding a beautiful house for my family. Um, I noticed across the road, I started building some head townhouses, and across the road, the other side, townhouses. I don't mind the development, but I think it, uh, four is plenty. I've been watching the last year and a half people uh, reversing from their units across the road from my house, and it takes about four attempts to actually get cars into their uh, driveway garage entry. So by looking at seven, I'm looking at, uh, it'll be just funny to watch them uh, reverse their cars into driveway. It takes so, so long. So what happens after that? They end up parking the street. Uh, as I said, um, I came into the area because I thought it would be a great area for the future of my kids and family. 
I think it is a great area, but seven is a little bit too much. Uh, and I think, I don't mind four, go for it. But the thing is that if all around me is going to be start getting townhouses, well, I'm going to sell my beautiful uh, 35 square home that I pay a lot of money for, from, you know, from an owner builder point of view, and paying big rates for one development, but I've got a double car garage and two parking for my future of my family of two kids. So if four of us can park our cars in my own driveway, I think it's, I think it's, uh, we are gonna start thinking about the future because as I said, I don't mind the development. I think it's good, but I think uh, seven is far too much because look at the parking, they're definitely gonna park in the street. Already the shops, shop people parking down the street and by having seven, it's not gonna work. Thank you. Thank you. Is there another objector who wishes to speak? No, no further objectors? Is there a representative for the applicant present? Yes, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to address you tonight. I think the, uh, the issues that particularly the, the two immediate uh, neighbouring uh, owners have raised for you are very real issues that come from the policies that you, have, you as a council have set in place in this particular location. You've got it on the board behind you. As part of your overall response to planning for the future housing of your whole community, you've identified very small, limited areas to experience genuine change. A lot of your community has neighbourhood residential zone deliberately trying to limit change. A lot of the areas on the map behind you are general residential zone that will experience a noticeable amount of change, but often at that two-storey level, perhaps a combination of one and two storeys. You've identified on that map behind you, just on the east of the shops here, only 19 house lots that are designated for real and significant change, the residential growth zone, as part of your overall housing response. As the council officers have said in their assessment, in this particular small pocket, you're expecting change to be in the order of three to four storeys as a small part of your overall housing response for the future housing of your whole community. So where our immediate neighbours say this will come as quite a change for them, this will be experienced across their boundary as something completely different, I don't stand here and say that's not true. It is true, it will be a change. It will be noticeably different. It's intended to be because that's the policies you set in place for just this small pocket of Hadfield. Two streets over, you are not gonna see this happen. Our two neighbours have the same policies in place. At some point in time, whether it's them or someone they sell to, will be expecting to do something similar to this because that is what your policies ask for. So it's not a situation of saying this proposal is trying to push beyond what you've asked for. This applicant is not trying to get something beyond what your policies have requested. In fact, your officer has said it's actually relatively constrained within the scope of what your policies say. They, they are contemplating potentially apartments, potentially four storeys in this area. So I appreciate that seven as a replacement of one dwelling is a real shift, but it's actually a shift that's midway in the range that you've set in your policies. So going back to the analysis and going back to the way the applicant has managed this process, you saw that there was a community consultation. You saw that there was some specific changes made seeking to directly respond to the concerns raised. The top floor has been pulled further off the boundary where the balconies are alongside an existing a home. They're now comfortably beyond the design standards in res code. Uh, the issue of the acoustic fence, we made the offer. We were happy to do that to try and accommodate that, that sense of interface. It's Melbourne Water who have demanded, and it's unfortunately not an optional thing, they have demanded that we have a fence that allows for water flow because of the building overlay. So it's not an applicant who's tried to ram through something and not, and not listen. We've, we've endeavoured to respond to what was asked of us. We've endeavoured to respond to what you have asked of the planning system for this site. So if I commend to you the officer report in a difficult situation where people will experience real change, it's a moderate, well-considered application that your officers have assessed thoroughly. 
that we've then worked further and made further changes to bring it up to you with a real sense that this is comfortably within what you've asked for an applicant on this site to bring as part of your future housing. So, so thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from councillors for the applicant no, or the officer? Um, yes. Excuse me, through the chair. No, oh. sorry, no more questions from the gallery. Our councillors are asking questions now. So, Councillor Kavanagh is on his feet. He'll ask a question. Is it that's fair when I, I just wanted to ask a question about this open style fencing. When I rang the council, they didn't even know what it means. Sorry, let's hear Councillor Kavanagh first and then we may return to your point later. I just want to check, one of the residents mentioned that there is a application, a life permit on this site for four double storey units. Is that correct? Uh, I'm I actually, I'm, I'm not personally aware whether it's still live. I understand there was right. a previous application. Perhaps the council officers yeah. can answer that. I noticed it's not mentioned in the report, whereas normally mm. is if there is. Is, is there a live permit? Um, there is uh, an approval for four dwellings on right. this site. And that's currently... A, mm. It's a valid permit. Fine. Right. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Thank Councillor Governor. Can I ask why that wasn't mentioned in the report? I may have missed it, but I it pretty It's a relevant consideration for us. I think I can answer that. Um, yeah, I noticed also that it's not mentioned in the report. Um, it's an omission in terms okay. of the background history oh, that's okay. on, this, on this item. Oh, thank you. That's no fine. worries. Thanks, thank Philip. Are there any further questions from councillors to the applicant? We'll see. Oh, seeing the gentleman from the gallery has asked a question, I may as well put it. Um, so he's asked um, about the gap under the fence. Uh, my understanding is that that's a requirement from Melbourne Water um, in order to allow flood um, mm. water through. Um, does that sufficiently answer your question? No, it doesn't. I mean, what does it entail? Is there a gap? Is it just, like, you know, is it into gaps yeah. between... Or what is it? Perhaps you could speak to it's, what form the fence will take. It's, it the noise. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's an interesting and unusual thing that you, you have a situation on sites like this, and it does happen across many suburbs in Melbourne, where a situation might currently be a normal paling fence, but as Melbourne Water goes through and does more studies and they reassess where their flood issues are, mm. they then come back and request new style fencing when things are changing. It will usually involve um, like wire mesh or, or something like that. So there's an actual barrier. So there's no sense that someone can pass through, but it does involve the sense that water needs to be able to flow through. So there are real you know, openings in the fence, which is why it doesn't function as an acoustic type barrier because the acoustic issue is a solid mm. barrier to deflect the noise. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no ability for anyone to get through or under the fence. It's not a gap like that. It's, it's sort of close, close wire. Wire lattice. Yes, yes, a, a wire lattice, yes. Can I ask, um, do you know how many metres the section that is, is that possible to ascertain at this point uh, or will that just be part of the later design? In, in terms of the, the height, I'm not sure if the council has the flood height. Uh, element there. It's, it, it relates to what the flood level is, so it's from yes. the ground up. Often it's in the order of you know, 300, 400, 500 mil, depending on what the, the nature of the flood issue is. Okay. Some areas are worse, some areas are better than others in terms of the issue. I'm not sure if there's a, if the yeah. more and water of specified. Oh, look, I was aware of it. I was yeah. just attempting to make the people in the gallery sure. aware, so thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And I do have a question as well, perhaps it's for the officer. Do we have any shadow diagrams that affect James Matthews' property, which is 124 Middle Street, to show? Uh, shadow diagrams were provided. They're not on the slide, so, but I'm sure that we could... So in the agenda. And does that take into account the surrounding properties as well? So the impact that his neighbours have had on him, including the impact that this dwelling will potentially have on his backyard. So it, it generally shows existing and proposed shadows. So existing... Yep. Um, I 
Um, I'm, I'm happy to address that briefly based on yes, the shadows that I have in, my, yeah. in mind. Uh, just if I, if I collect my memory, Mr. Matheson was number 124. That's correct. Yes. yes. So the shadow diagrams we have uh, are showing that there's shadowing over the, the property uh, in the 9 a.m., given that that's the direction of the morning sun. But even at that point, in terms of a res code analysis, it's still within the tolerance that res code allows because the large section of the rear yard. Uh, not affected by by shadow. By 10 a.m. it's reducing back so that there's only a small section beyond the fence line and by 11 a.m. there is no shadow impact from this proposal onto Mr Matheson's property at all. Okay. Uh, so a as the officers assessed, even on the worst case scenario of the 9 a.m., this would be treated as a compliant uh, design response based on res code. And part of that is delivered by the fact that the top floor uh, and the mid floor was moved back as part of our amendment we made following the discussion meeting we had. Okay, thank so there was actually a reduction of shadow at right. that point. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion from councillors or a motion that a council wishes to make? I'm happy to move an alternative motion, please. Councillor Cabinet. Okay, to the one that's printed before us. Uh, I move um, that the Urban Planning Committee resolve that a refusal to grant a planning permit for MPS 215 599 be issued for the construction of seven dwellings comprising a six triple storey, one double storey dwelling at 122 Middle Street, Hadfield, subject to the following grounds of refusal. And I apologise for the length of it, but uh, I'll read them. One, the proposed development has an awkward design expression due to the external material composition, cantilevering third storey, and an internal layout that limits street activation. This fails A. Proposed Design and Development Overlay Schedule 24, DDO 24 of Amendment C159, which includes a design objective that requires new development in neighbourhood centres to be of high quality, contributing to the approved overhaul amenity. B. Clause 2134, Urban Design Built Form Landscape Design of the Moreland Planning Scheme, which seeks to ensure site design, building frontages, design articulation and internal layout achieve a good interface and with, with and surveillance of the public realm. Point two, the proposed development has poor internal amenity through the creation of dwellings that have poor outlook for future residents. This, proposed, this fails proposed design development overlay, Schedule 24, DDO 24 of Amendment 159, which requires a 4.5 metres side boundary setback for primary outlooks, in other words, living and boundary outlook, two metre side boundary setbacks for bedroom outlooks, and two metres minimum balcony widths. And point three, the proposed development is visual, visually bulky when viewed from the uh, general residential zone. Critical, critically, the three metre ground setback and the six metre upper level setback of the proposal, the proposed DDI 24, Amendment 1C159, has not been provided, nor is there sufficient room for planting buffers. And if I have a seconder, I'll speak to that. As Chair, I'd like to second that. Okay. Look, I understand that this is in the Jesuit, uh, residential uh, growth zone, but you'll notice that my objection <coughs> isn't about the size of the building, even though I, do, I can understand why residents are concerned, but it is in a residential growth zone. But it is about the visual bulk. For me, particularly on agenda 20, uh, page 23 of our agenda, when you see the visual bulk at the side there, for me that is a step too far, even in a gen general residential uh, growth zone. I, I think that is just a step too far. I visited the site this afternoon and walked around, and had a nice coffee in the coffee shop in West Street, and, and I know this, the area well, but I wanted to get a good feel and I looked at the map of where it's a general uh, residential growth zone, <laughs> and I still think that this is a step too far. Seven dwellings on a block of 697 square metres means that each dwelling is less than 100 square metres. And, you know, I know it's a, a growth zone, but for me, that's too far. Even five, with some articulation in between, I could almost <coughs> accept. 
I personally don't like reverse living because it limits the amount of people, the, the people that can move into those areas. Obviously, you've got to be very able-bodied to be able to live in those apartments. But I understand that in a resident, that in a growth zone, that's accepted. So I haven't put that in, in the alternative resolution. But I have put about the visual bulk. I have put about the articulation with the street. And I have put, put the fact that the street frontage has a very different street frontage to what is currently uh, on display in that area. So they're the concerns that I have, and I hope my fellow councillors share them. And uh, I think they're valid concerns. I think the objectors have put their case very well tonight, and I, um, I, I share many of their concerns as well. I accept the applicant is telling us that the zone it is in, and that's why I've been very careful about what grounds I'm refusing on. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. And as seconder, I'd also like to um, echo what Councillor Kavanagh has said and also add that despite what the applicant said in relation to what council is seeking, we are also seeking quality development. And in these areas where we have proposed a higher density, it's to be a higher density of quality where the amenity is also at a high standard. And in my view, it doesn't appear that the amenity for this area is of a high standard for the neighbourhood or for the residents abutting these properties. So thank you for attending this evening to the residents from Hadfield. I appreciate you coming and I hope my fellow councillors will support Councillor Kavanagh, Kavanagh and myself in this um, alternate refusal. So I'll now, if there, are there any further councillors who wish to speak? Um, Councillor Thompson, yes. Um, <coughs> Um, yes, I'd like to support the motion put forward by Councillor Kavanagh and also to thank the residents that have come along and also bringing new information to the Council tonight to consider. There was a, we weren't aware that there was another live application mm. on this particular site, mm. so the fact that you've come here tonight has proved that you know, it's of, of, benefit, of additional benefit to what's um, being put into the proposal, so thank you for that. And I also concur with um, what the uh, previous councillors have been saying. That, there, it is a residential growth zone, and we are looking for increased um, development and density in that zone, but also it, it, it has to be of a high quality. We're really pushing for top quality development in Moreland, and <coughs> recently we've been having these urban development quality forums to bring about a new conversation about how we can see better development in Moreland. So when we have these applications before us, I think that we can test some of the amendments that, are, um, that council is looking to implement um, further on down the track and see if we can really bring about some good quality development in the area. So I appreciate everything that's happened around this application, but also can go and thank Councillor Kavanagh for bringing in. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Are there any further speakers? I'll speak. Um, thank you. I was intending upon reading the application um, and the officer's report um, to support this um, initially on basis of what was in the report. Um, I was under the impression that it did meet um, the residential growth zone that we are seeking in terms of height um, and other aspects of the development. As councillors on Urban Planning Committee, um, we do face double bind in that our role as a councillor is to represent our community and the concerns of constituents. But our role on Urban Planning Committee is to act as the enforcers of um, our urban planning laws. Um, and sometimes those two things don't align. And originally I thought, well, this is one of those cases where sadly um, the planning laws line up for this application. That said, I've been convinced um, by the arguments put forward by my fellow councillors tonight in relation to the density on this block of land. Um, I think it is too dense for this particular area of Hadfield um, and the floodplain issues that do have an impact on what fence is able to be installed um, mean that that will have an additional impact. But the fact that there is an existing application that's live on the site plays a lot into my decision making um, because it demonstrates to me that at some point in time the developer felt that that application was viable um, and appropriate for this area. Um, and so for me, I now have to question why we need a new application, why it's suddenly the case that that original application is no longer viable or relevant to this area and why it has to be bigger. Um, so in light of that new information, um, I'm now of the position that I'll support the alternative recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Hopper. Are there any further speakers? Uh, I'll, guess I'll speak briefly. Um, 
but I, I do also rise to speak in favour of the resolution to refuse the permit, um, and I won't repeat what's been said before. Um, oh, and I guess my view here is um, is really guided by the fact that uh, this is one of the first uh, first sort of applications we've seen with that kind of density in this area in Middle Street. Um, I do concur with the resident that it would be okay um, uh, where the, that shopping strip really is above above the shops, um, et cetera, et cetera. But we must remember that it is very re a residential area still further north. So it might still be in the growth zone, it might still be in the activity centre, and that might envisage this type of development. That might be true. But, there's the, but it is one of the first ones that's being done. And I think when that occurs, what you really need to see is some gradual change and the area just can't go from single stories to all of a sudden that type of density and that type of um, three level heights. So I think that although it's in that zone, it needs to be sympathetic and it needs to be a gradual change that occurs. And I think this really pushes um, that concept a little bit more. Um, I'm not too fussed with the concept of being uh, an existing permit being live on the site. I think that occurs quite regularly, that permits uh, are issued and then developers, when planning schemes change, get another permit. I think that's fine. But, but in this particular case, what I really think, and I concur with the comments before by Councillor Kavanagh, that um, more could have been done to eliminate the visual bulk, to decrease the amount of apartments, um, and to make sure that it is fitting into the neighbourhood character a little bit more. So I don't think what's being presented is the best that poss the, the best possible development that could have occurred on that site, and for that reason I won't be supporting it. Thank you, Councillor Tapnas. I'll put Councillor Kavanagh's alternate motion for a refusal to the vote. All those in favour? I declare that carried. We'll now turn to the planning officer to outline the legal process from here. The Urban Planning Committee has decided to issue a refusal to grant a planning permit subject to the alternative motion as detailed by councillors. Following the issue of the refusal, all objector parties and the permit applicant will, re will receive a copy of the decision. The applicant will have 60 days to appeal council's decision at the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Thank you. Thank you for attending this evening. We'll now move on to the next application, which is DD 77 1 Douglas Street, Pascoe Vale, Planning <coughs> Permit Application MPS 2015-551. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This application proposes the construction of six triple storey dwellings at 1 Douglas Street, Pascoe Vale. The site's located at the eastern end of Douglas Street, which terminates in a court bowl at the interface with the Craigieburn railway line. It's in a general residential zone and part of the land is affected by an erosion management overlay. The image there is the site view from the street. The surrounding area is characterised by a mix of single dwellings and multi-unit developments of one to two storeys. The advertised proposal constituted seven double storey attached dwellings with vehicle access provided from an existing crossing to Douglas Street, car parking for each dwelling at ground level and secluded private open space in the form of east facing courtyards and balconies. The application was advertised and 14 objections were received. The key concerns raised were overdevelopment, amenity impacts, parking and traffic and waste management. A consultation meeting was held on the 30th of March 2016. All the objectors were invited and eight attended. After the meeting, the applicant amended the proposal, <coughs> showing a number of changes aimed at addressing objector concerns and these included the deletion of one dwelling and the provision of a visitor car parking space, meaning parking meets the planning scheme requirements, and a communal rubbish bin storage area at the rear of the site. 
and the amended proposal is largely compliant with Clause 55 requirements. In addition to this, there's several conditions in the recommendation to address some of the concerns raised by objectors, and they include the provision of a high fence along the boundary with 56 Park Street, and the submission of an arborist report assessing impacts to the tree in the rear yard at 56 Park Street to ensure its protection during construction, the relocation of the rubbish bin storage area at the rear away from the habitable room windows of that adjoining dwelling at 58 Park Street, and screening of a west-facing bedroom window to dwelling one. It's recommended that a notice of decision issue subject to the conditions in the recommendation. Thank you. Are there any members of the gallery present who wish to object? Yes. <coughs> Thank you for your time tonight, everybody. I appreciate this opportunity and I'm really nervous. Well, don't be nervous. <laughs> um, my name's Carmel Pope and I live at number 56 and I have three main issues. I'm going to choke up in a minute. <laughs> um, I really don't think that this development fits in with the character of the existing neighbourhood. Um, all the, we've got townhouses and units all around us. They've all got pitched roofs. Um, they're not built as a square block of flats. They're all sort of got their own sort of individuality, even though they're joined. They're not just one whole row of what I call a block of flats. Um, the colour ch scheme that they've chosen, I believe, is black and grey, which when I look at other developments in the area, that colour, they're so dull and boring, and no other buildings in this area are of those colours. They're pretty sort of nice. <laughs> um, um, this side is surrounded by my house. Oh, this site is... The sixth unit on this block um, is pretty much three quarters of my backyard and um, I'm asking if that unit could be made into a single storey. Um, the block opposite in number two Douglas Street has got six double story, uh, five double storeys and one single on it and I don't know whether the laws have been changed to alter that single storey in the backyard. Um, I know he's cut it down from seven to six, but I'd really like, because that's bordering on my backyard, I'd really like um, for you to sort of assess and see if it would be viable to have that as a single story. Um, I'm shaking. <laughs> um, um, and also, because it's so out of character for the neighbourhood, it is on the train line, so a lot of people are going to see this it's so different to what's around it and people on the train line and even from Park Street, it's going to be visible from Park Street and it just doesn't look anything like any of the developments that are around this area. So if there could even be sort of some sort of changes to it to make it fit into the area, the front of the development is nothing like the area. Um, it's also um, high risk. It's got the EMO... Um, section and it goes right across the high, the whole deep side. Um, I'm concerned about flooding and land slippage because quite a few years ago, um, I don't know whether it was the council or Rick Rail did some work up in the top corner of that block and it caused a river through my backyard and it was sorted out between council and Vic Road and I'm not sure who fixed it but we couldn't even go into my backyard. It was so just pouring down. Um, I do have many other concerns about this development but these are the concerns that are actually affecting me and that's why they're the only ones I'm raising. And I just think this new style of architecture is quite suitable in an area um, in an up-and-coming areas, but not in an area where we've already got the neighbourhood character established. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You spoke well. Thank are, there you. Any, <laughs> are there any further objectors who wish to speak? Good evening. Thank you for...